Hey guys, how are you going? So in today's video, I'll be showing you how to create a vertical icon navigation menu using HTML and CSS. So right here is going to be the final result. As we can see on the side here, we've got this icon navigation menu. And of course, upon hovering over, you can click on these links, but also we get a nice tooltip which appears next to um, each icon to, of course, indicate some more information about the link. Okay, and what's also good about this is we also have an opportunity to set an icon or link as being active. So as we can see here, um, the, uh, the music library uh, link is the current active link. So maybe if you are on the music library page, you can simply add a CSS class to this link in order to make it active. So let's go inside this tab right here and begin from scratch. So inside the text editor, uh, it currently looks like this. So first thing to do is going to be to create a new directory right here called SRC, short for source. And inside here, we're going to be including or creating a new CSS file. And this CSS file is going to hold uh, all of the styles for the menu. So we can call this menu.css. Okay. And then let's go back inside the index.html and of course include that CSS file just like this. Okay. Um, and also, we're going to be using Google Material Icons as usual for um, uh, for our icon library. So head over to uh, this website right here and just copy this link. I'll leave a link to this in the description and copy this and paste it inside your head. Okay, cool. Um, so now we are ready to go and uh, we're going to be starting on the HTML for the icon menu. So inside the body, let's firstly just create a new navigation element or a nav element uh, with a class of menu. And inside here, we're going to be creating um, a bunch of links. So we can say a with an href of let's just go to the current page. So dot forward slash. And then inside here, we can give it a class of a menu underscore underscore item. So of course, uh, right here using BEM block element modifier as usual, um, we have a menu item class. And also we're going to be doing a data attribute. It's going to be data dash tooltip is equal to let's just say dashboard in this case. So right here is where you're going to be storing your tooltip, which of course is going to appear when you hover over the icon. And then inside the anchor tag, let's make a new um, I element with a class of material dash icons. And we're going to put, uh, we're going to be putting home inside here. So that's the usage of Google material icons. You give a class of material dash icons, then inside here, you put your icon name. So if you're after more icons, if you go to the website right here, you can then filter by name or just scroll down. So for example, I just use the icon called home. So doing a search for home, we can see right here, we have this home icon. And that of course is going to be the icon which will appear on the page. Okay, let's go back inside here now and just do the same thing a few more times. Let's create five links. Okay, so let's just say uh, I'm going to be using the same links as my example. So music underscore notes. Okay, a tooltip of music library. And I might just copy and paste the rest from my second screen. Okay, perfect. So we are done with the HTML for, um, uh, for this uh, navigation menu. I might just change these hrefs to be the same thing. So I'll be doing dot force. So now we are ready to move on to the CSS. But first, I want to save this and check out what it looks like in the browser. So it looks something like this. Currently, as we can see, of course, we have links working. And also um, the Google material icons are working perfectly fine. So now let's head inside the CSS. And the first thing we're going to be doing here is we are going to be um, just targeting the HTML element and we're going to be saying margin left and I'm going to be setting this to be 75 pixels. So essentially we want 75 pixels of space on the left side um, for the menu to appear. Okay. And then down here we can add or target uh, the class of menu. And for this one, we're going to be saying position and setting this to fixed, also a top of zero and a left of zero. Okay, so basically, it's going to be positioned in the top left corner of the page. Okay, and a position of fixed is going to allow the menu to hover on top of everything else, even when scrolling down the web page. Okay, 
we're going to be setting the width of this menu to be 75 pixels, uh, the same width which we used up here for the margin. We're going to also set a height of 100%. We want this menu to take up um, the whole vertical space on the page. We're going to be saying background, and we're going to set this to be just a light grey. Of course, change the colour to your own liking. We're going to set a base font size of 16px, uh, okay? And then later on, we're going to be using relative units uh, to change the font of a few more things down the line. And we're going to also set the font family to be sans serif. So now saving this and then refreshing, we can see we get something like this. So of course, we have the menu on the left side, 75 pixels wide, and it takes up the whole height of the page. If I was to go in into the inspector here and inspect um, HTML, as we can see, the body is starting 75 pixels from the left side, which means if I was to put some content uh, down here, so something uh, like this, okay, and then save this and refresh, we can see it, uh, it starts right there, so your menu does not overlay anything else, okay? Uh, let's now move on to uh, styling each one of these menu items. So, back inside here, let's target the menu item class. Let's set a position of relative, okay? And this will be used later on when we start to implement the tooltip, but for now, let's keep that at position relative. Let's display this as a flex element, okay? And also an align items of center, um, align items of center, and also a justify content also of center. And essentially, uh, these three properties are gonna uh, vertically and horizontally center the icon within um, the navigation item, okay? We're gonna also say padding and make this 15px top and bottom and zero for left and right and a text decoration of none to remove the default uh, underline uh, caused by anchor tags. We're going to set a text color of a medium uh, gray and also a transition of background at 0.3 seconds. This will make more sense a bit later on when we move on to uh, doing uh, hover states, but for now let's set this uh, to be a transition of background at 0.3 seconds. Okay. Let's just save this here and refresh the browser, and we get this right here. So of course, getting quite close to the product, which I showed here, but let's go back inside the text editor once again, and now target um, the icon uh, element within the menu item. So let's target menu item, and then target uh, any i tags, which are direct descendants of that. And we're going to be saying font size and setting this to be 2.2 em. So 2.2 times the current font size. So basically 2.2 times 16px is going to be the font size of these icons. Let's save this and then refresh and we get this right here. Okay. Uh, let's move on now to uh, styling up an active version of one of these links. So as I mentioned earlier, you can make one of these links the current active link if you are, for example, on the current page. So for this, we're going to be using a modifier class on the menu item class. So we can say, for example, for the music library, we're going to say menu underscore underscore item dash dash and then active. So an active modifier on this element, sorry, on this class or element. Uh, let's just go back inside the CSS now and uh, target that CSS class. So we can say menu item dash dash active and for this we're going to be saying color we're going to set the text color to be a uh, just a straight black and also a background of a slightly lighter version of the gray used um, just up here okay so we're going to be saying uh, triple d for that one so now let's save this and refresh and as we can see we have um, of course this link right here which is considered to be the current active link okay so now let's go back inside here and do a hover state um, to change the background color when you hover over one of our links. So we can say right here, uh, menu underscore underscore item, then colon hover. And for this, we're going to be saying background, and we're going to be saying uh, the same triple D, which we used up here for the active state. So now saving this and then refreshing, we can see uh, hovering over um, one of our links is going to be changing the background color. And um, there is a nice transition on that change due to the property we added earlier, this transition right here at 0.3 seconds, okay? 
So now uh, the final part of this video is going to be implementing the tooltips to the right of the icon. So we're going to say here menu underscore underscore item and then colon colon after. So uh, taking advantage of uh, CSS pseudo elements, essentially this right here is going to create a virtual element within CSS, uh, which of course appears after um, each one of our menu items. So for this, we're going to uh, sorry, we're going to be saying position and setting this to be absolute. This is in conjunction with the position of uh, relative up here. So of course, having this relative positioning on this menu item allows us to use absolute down here to position the um, the uh, tooltip relative to the menu item itself. We're going to also say display and set this to be inline block. Okay, we're going to say and a left of 100%, okay? And just up here, we're gonna also set the transform to be translate Y, and then we're gonna say negative 50%, okay? So essentially right here, by combining uh, these two properties, it's gonna allow us to vertically center the tooltip within each one of our menu items. And this left of 100% is basically just saying we're going to be starting the tooltip 100% to the left of the menu items, essentially um, just to the right of them. Okay, we can also say content. And for the content property, we're going to, uh, we're, we're going to be using uh, the AWTR function and then putting data dash tooltip inside here. So this AWTR or attribute function in CSS essentially takes the value of the attribute which you pass inside here. So of course, back in the HTML, it's gonna take the value of our data tooltip, so dashboard for example, and insert it as the content of this pseudo element, okay? We're gonna also say margin left and set this to be 15px. We're gonna stop there, save this, and then refresh the browser, and we get this right here. So as we can see, of course, our values for our tooltips have been retrieved, and we have also, um, we have the tooltips being vertically aligned in the center, and we get that 15px of margining, uh, which you can see right there. So now we have to fix this problem right here, where we have the account security or longer, more broken up sentences on uh, two lines. So to make this a single line, we can go back inside here, and we're going to be setting the white space property and we're going to be setting this to be no wrap. So now saving this and refreshing, it is now on a single line. So of course it's much more legible and it takes up less space. Okay, let's go back inside here now and set a padding of 7px top and bottom and 12px left and right. Let's set a font size of 0.9em, so 90% uh, of the current font size. A font weight of bold if you like okay and also a background of RGBA RGBA 000, zero, zero and then we're going to be saying 0 0.8 so a 80% opaque black also a border radius of 15 px okay for nice rounded uh, edges and we're going to stop there save this and refresh and we get this right here Okay, so uh, the text color needs to be changed. Let's go back inside here now and set a color of white for the text. Okay, let's try again, refresh, and we get something like this. Okay, so now it's gonna be all about only making the tooltip appear when we hover over one of our links. So back inside here, let's firstly, um, inside uh, the main pseudo element uh, rule set, we can set an opacity of zero and a visibility of hidden. So of course an opacity of zero is going to make it basically invisible, but without the visibility of hidden, you can still click on the actual um, tooltips uh, even though they aren't visible. So having this right here is extra security, okay? Um, and also we're going to say transition and set this to be opacity at 0 0.3 seconds so that way when we do hover in it's going to have a nice uh, transition to change the opacity so saving this and refreshing of course is going to remove the tooltips and we can see right here hovering over these areas i still can't actually click on them okay 
Let's go back inside here now and then target the menu item uh, then colon hover so when you hover over the menu items we are then going to be targeting the after pseudo uh, element so this one right here and we're going to be saying opacity I'm going to set this to be one and finally a visibility of visible for um, the visibility property okay so now saving this and refreshing it is now working perfectly fine and it's basically complete. So I just want to go back inside here and explain this one more time. So essentially we're targeting the after pseudo element when hovering over the menu item. And we're just going to be simply changing the opacity and the visibility back to their defaults, which of course is basically undoing this right here. And that is how to create a vertical icon navigation menu using HTML and CSS. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you later.